In this video, we are going to show you how to subtract using the column method. This is sometimes also referred to as using chimney sums in subtraction. This method is particularly useful when subtracting larger numbers. So we're going to start with an example of 37 take away 13. In subtraction, we must always remember that it is the larger number take away the smaller number. To write out your chimney sum, you're going to write the larger number on top of the smaller number with a takeaway sign next to it to show that we're subtracting and an equals line underneath to show where we're going to write our answer. Then distinguish the tens column and the units column to show what each number represents. With chimney sums, we always start with the units column. We're going to do the subtraction question going down the way. So seven take away three. Underneath, we're going to write the answer, which is four. We're then going to go to the tens column, which is three take away one, and the answer is two. And so our answer altogether is 24. We're now going to show you an example where borrowing is required. This is where a subtraction down a column is not possible and so you have to borrow one from the number's neighbour in order to make it possible. When writing out this chimney sum, it's also really important to remember what each digit in the number represents and which column it belongs to. So for example, in 156 there is 100, 5 tens and 6 units. Whereas in 49 there are 0 hundreds, 4 tens and nine units. It's very important to remember which column each digit belongs to. As there are zero hundreds in 49, it's sometimes useful to add a zero in there so that we remember where each digit belongs. As before, we start with the units column and do six take away nine. However, we cannot do that because nine is larger than six. This is where we have to borrow. So we go to our neighbor, which is number five, and we borrow one. As we have borrowed one, the five now becomes a four, and we put the one next to the six, and that now makes it 16. We can now do this question as 16 take away 9, which equals 7. We then go to the tens column, which is now 4, not 5. 4 take away 4, which is 0. We then go to the hundreds column, 1 take away 0 is 1. And so our answer is 107. We're now going to show you another subtraction sum using borrowing. However, this time the borrowing is a little bit more complicated because we are asking to borrow from 0, which is not possible. We then add in our equals line where we're going to write our answer, our takeaway sign so we know what we're doing, and we add in our hundreds column, our tens column, and our units column. We start with our units as usual, three takeaway nine we cannot do. We look to our neighbour to borrow one, which we can't do because there is nothing there. We then need to go to our next neighbour, which is seven, and borrow one from there. We borrow one from the seven, which turns it into a six, and pass it to the neighbour, which was zero. That now becomes ten, which we can cross out and make nine, to then give that one to our units column. We can now go on as usual, so starting with our units column, 13 take away 9 equals 4. In our tens column, 9 take away 4 is 5. And in our hundreds column, 6 take away 3 equals 3. And so our answer is 354. Let's try one more question. This method allows us to do subtraction questions that we wouldn't normally be able to do in our head or using an empty number line. This time we're going to go into the thousands. So we're going to do 5,031 take away 373. We're then going to put our equals line again. You should use the ruler to draw this and our subtraction sign just to show what it is that we are doing here. We have our thousands column, our hundreds column, our tens column and our units column. And again, I will be putting a zero in the thousands column just to remind myself that there is nothing else there. Once again, we start with our unit. One take away three, we can't do. So we look to our neighbor, we cross out the three and make it a two, taking that one away and giving it to the unit. It is now 11 take away three, which is eight. We then go to our tens column. Two take away seven. Again, we can't two because the seven is bigger than the two. And so we look to our hundreds column. Our hundreds column has a zero, which we can't take away one from. So we then jump to the next neighbor, which is a five. Cross that out, make it a four and then bring the one over to the hundreds column, again cross it out and make it a nine, and give that one to the tens column, which now makes this 12 take away seven as opposed to two take away seven. 12 take away seven is five. We then go to our hundreds column, nine take away three is six, and so we write that underneath. And then we go to our last column, our thousands column, four take away zero is four. And so our answer is 4,658. This method can take a lot of practice, so please don't worry if you don't get it right the first time. As I said earlier, this is a really useful method when it comes to subtracting sums that you wouldn't be able to do in your head or using an empty number line. 
Keep coming back to this video and watching these examples in order to help your understanding of this method. And as always, please do not hesitate to reach out to one of us and ask us if there are any other questions or if you would like us to clarify something. Thank you for watching.